See, so don't raise them high and proud. You met online. You're looking at items at the seniors like, is that legal? It's totally legal. <laughs> Get your hands up. You met online. Let me just see them. All right. So listen, I tell this to the online couples all the time. A good match is a good start. But it is not. And one of the things I've noticed today with couples and with families that I work with, and it's the popular word in our culture today, resilience. From difficult conversations, seasons, and storms in life. It, it's what Proverbs talks about, overlooking an offense. When I hear what takes some people out and what takes some couples out, I'm like, we just need more resilience. And that's where we start today with building a lasting marriage. Building a strong family. I grew up in the 80s, so I didn't have a choice. He broke over 400 bones in his career, jumping buses and fountains and neighborhoods anymore. <laughs> no, we used to do and that. if you're a good dad, I want you to stop the bus. Yep, that was the uh, cousin Sean. He and I want you to notice, head. you see how smiling you, you picked a friend, and that was the one who was getting hurt. On, and I remember dislocating your shoulder, come walking. The teachers were all lined up smoking against the building. <laughs> 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 you didn't have a child, but you don't make decisions for your relationship. You just kind of let the relationship happen. You let the relationship happen to you. You haven't made decisions. If you're not dating anyone right now, but considering it or know that it's in your future, now is the time to start making decisions for your relationship. Now is the time. I would just encourage the ladies in here taking notes that are single. Look around for another single guy taking notes. <laughs> through a relationship and we live in a culture that's like just go kind of with the ebb and flow no 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 you go in making decisions on what the foundation of this relationship is going to look like we, we listen great relationships aren't built on chemistry and attraction every relationship starts off with chemistry and attraction but you have to move to something deeper and I want to remind all of us in here a lot of stuff we see in the movies is only in the movies Right? You want to be on the same team, a sense of being part of a team and building something together. Well, that's going to require two more decisions. You have to give high priority to the relationship. Meaning when you get married, the single life is over. And what that means is, yeah, hobbies can change, friends can change, relationships can change. Because this person now is high priority, which leads to the last two, willingness to sacrifice for others. I don't you're going to build your marriage on something. And I submit to you from Jesus and his words in Matthew 7, the parable of the wise and foolish builders. You're going to see that these two verses for the wise builder and two verses for the foolish builder. Jesus and his word and his teaching for the couple that builds it on sand and experiences a great crash. Anyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus says, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. It had the right foundation. When you read the words of the foolish builder, you hear, but everyone who hears these words of mine, so that's the same as the wise builder, but does not put them into practice, chooses a different foundation. It's like a foolish man who built his house on sand seat for our decisions. All of these passengers on the bus, they're good passengers. They make lousy drivers because passengers influence our decisions. So I want scripture in the driver's seat of these decisions that we're talking about today. And then next to it is tradition. I've seen too many churches experience a great crash because of tradition. Traditions do make the decisions for our family. They're on the bus, and most couples I work with, when they walk into the office, emotion's in the driver's seat. One of the first things we have to do is remove emotion from the driver's seat and put scripture in the driver's seat as we make decisions. And here's what we know as we talk about these storms. Every couple goes through storms in life. Every couple. You look at a couple. Anybody here married over 30, 40, 50 years? Let me just see your hands. Okay. How long have y'all been married there, third row? 51 years. Okay. <laughs> That's a great backup singer. And I, I love being in groups with, with senior couples who are able to listen to my complaints and whining and look at me and be like, <laughs> right? I mean, because we had antibacterial products, right, to keep our kids clean. She let her kids pick up cigarette butts and chew on them. <laughs> her kids are fine. 
He used to let his kids sleep in the back window of the car on long trips. We now strap them in like we're launching them to outer space. Right? How many of you ever drinking out of garden hoses? Raise your hand. Look around the room. We all survived. We got lead coursing through our bodies. Marriage is restored and God doesn't work in their life. And a year later, you're looking around and going, where are they? Like, everything's fine now. Okay, everything's fine. Stay put, because guess what? More storms are coming. More difficult seasons and stages of life are coming. So work on your foundation. If you cried out to God during a storm, keep praying long after the storm passes. If you reach for a Bible during a storm, keep it in hand as you wait for the next storm. And make these decisions. So when we are starting our family in strength, each member of the family has to make this decision on their own. Deuteronomy 6, chapter Chapter 6, verse 4, verses 4 through 7. Verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. We've been teaching it to our kids since they were very small. There is a God, there's only one God. He is the Lord, and He is our Lord. Verse 5 says, Love the Lord your God. And then verse 6 starts with the parents. says, These truths, these commandments, are to be upon your hearts. Because this is what we know, Mom and Dad. What's on your heart will eventually find its way onto the hearts of your children.